Hey there, I'm Douglas from DraftBit. Today, we're going to be exploring the bottom sheet component. A bottom sheet component lets you display content that slides up from the bottom of the screen. It's a versatile UI element often used in apps to present additional options, actions, or content without covering the main screen. To add the bottom sheet component, open the component picker on the left panel and click add. Then look for the bottom sheet and then click on it. The bottom sheet will appear on your screen. Initially, it might blend in due to the default white background. Let's quickly go ahead and change the background color so that we can see it. Then we go ahead on styles. Then we look for the background color. Then we choose a dark background color that we can see. Then let's go to our device preview and click web preview. And there we go. You notice a small white handlebar. So this part in the middle which allows users to swipe the sheet up and down. So if we hold this and we swipe up, we're able to swipe up the bottom sheet. So this handles a key interactive element, enhancing the user experience by making the bottom sheet easy to control. We're going to start by uh, looking at the style section, uh, focusing on the snap points, configurations, and handle settings to customize the bottom sheet's look and functionality. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the border color. This sets the border sheet's border color to define its outer edges. Let's pick an obvious color like red. And as you can see, the border color is now red, but we can't really make it out. To make it out, we're going to have a border width. So we can have a border width of 20 points. Then now it's going to be much more obvious. And as you can see, we now get a thick border. Let's have that back to normal. Then up next, let's look at the bottom snap position, the middle snap position, and the top snap position, because these, they work together. So you might ask yourself, what is a snap position? When we grab our bottom sheet and we let it go, it's going to snap to a new location. When we grab it up and we let it go, it's going to settle at a new location. This is what we call the snap point. So we can have multiple snap points, right? And here you can see there's a point where it doesn't go past that snap point. So that will be the final snap point. Here we're able to affect that behavior to say, what do you want the bottom snap to be? What do you want the middle snap to be? And what do you want the top snap to be? And logically, we want to start with the bottom snap position. Uh, this controls how the lower bottom sheet can go when minimized. Lower settings review more screen content, ideal if the bottom sheet is for brief interactions. And how this is set, it's set from points from the top. So whenever you specify your points or percentage, you're saying that I want it to be X amount of points or X amount of percentage uh, from the top. And for this, I'm going to choose percentage. And then I'm going to say my bottom snap is going to be 80% from the top. Then up next, we have middle snap position. And I want this to be 20% from the top. So everything is specified from the top. Then lastly, we have top snap position. I just want this to be 2% from the top. Then now let's go through these three snap positions. So right now we have the first one. I'm going to slightly swipe up and reach the bottom snap, which is 80% from the top. So if this is the top, we're going to say 80% from the top is going to be somewhere here. So when I swipe up and let it go, it's going to reach that bottom snap position. So now, as you can see, this is 80%. So this is the bottom snap position. And the middle snap position was saying it's going to be 20% from the top. So it's going to be like somewhere up here. So let's swipe up. Then let it go. And as you can see, so I swiped it up and I let it go around here. And then it went up on its own to the nearest snap position, which is the middle snap which we put as 20%. Now we have a final snap position, which we're calling the top snap position, which is 2% from the top. So it's going to be somewhere here. So now when I swipe up, this is the top snap position. Now we have the default behavior back and it just goes wherever it wants. Up next, let's look at the handle color. So I told you what the handle is, is this white bar and we can change that color. So we can change that color to red and have the handle color be red. But yeah, let's have that back to normal. Then we have initial snap position. This defines where the bottom sheet starts on the screen. You can set this to any point, such as halfway, fully expanded, allowing you to control how much content is visible initially. So the initial is when I open my app, where is it sitting? 
right? And you can specify here. I want it at the top, middle, or bottom. So I can say I want it at the middle. And then it's going to go to the middle. Then I can say I want it at the top. Then it's going to go to the top. Right? And then I can say I want it at the bottom. Then it's going to go to the bottom. Let's have that back to normal. Then up next, we have show handle. Here we can specify whether we want to show the handle or hide the handle. So here we can hide the handle and the handle is no longer visible. Let's have that back to normal. Then after show handle, we have show vertical scroll indicator. So this adds a scroll indicator when the bottom sheet content is large enough to scroll. So if we are, if I had content inside here and it's large enough to scroll, we'd be able to scroll through that content and then this would show a vertical indicator on the right side and if we disable it, it would hide it. Then up next, we have top border radius. So this adds rounding to the top edges of the bottom sheet, making it visually smoother and more modern. So if, we, if I come here and I say 50, so this is adding 50 points uh, to the border, you notice that the border is now more rounded. Then up next, we have top insert. So this adds a space between the top of the screen and the bottom sheet. So this is the top of the bottom sheet and then the top of the screen. So we're adding a space between the two. Then top snap position, we already talked about this. Yeah, I guess let's move over to the configuration section. So here on the right side, we notice we have a configuration section. And the first thing that we see here is the component name. So this is the identifier for the bottom sheet within your project. Renaming it helps with organization, especially in complex layouts. So think of a situation where we have uh, more than one bottom sheet. We can give it a name so that we can, we're able to identify it. And you're going to see this helps us even later on when we're trying to add actions. So when you add an action, maybe you want to open the bottom sheet using a button, it's going to ask you which bottom sheet you want to open. So you can imagine if you have four or five bottom sheets and they all have the same name, it's going to become complicated. Then up next, let's look at the advanced properties. So on the advanced properties, we have the initial snap index. So this controls the bottom sheet starting position. So this is uh, a bit more advanced than what we looked at when we did initial snap position. So this was just a simple way of doing it where we just come in and we say bottom. Then we can just come in and say middle, you know, this is very simple and this works in most cases. But then there are some cases where you want more control. So you come here in here where it says initial snap index. So this just specifies the index that you want. And we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. And depending on the number that you choose. So for example, if I put 1, uh, our starting point is going to be different. So here is we're starting at this point. And if we put 2, we're starting at the bottom. And if we put three, right, then it disappears. It goes way, way down. Then if we start at zero, then it's going to be up here. So it just depends with the index that you choose and you're able to start at a different position. Then we have enable over scroll. So this allows the bottom sheet to move slightly past its snap points, creating a bounce back effect when released. So let's enable that and see. And let's go up. So you notice here, it's a snap point. Let me move past the snap point a bit and let go. You notice it goes up a bit, then it bounces down. So if I try to do this, right, I've moved past the snap point, let go, it goes back down and bounces a bit. Let's have that back to normal. Then up next, we have friction. So this adjusts the drag resistance of the bottom sheet. A higher value adds more resistance, requiring users to apply more force to move the sheet. So basically, this is just the force that you need to move this. As you can see right now, it's a bit hard to move. I have to kind of drag to move it. So that's the friction that we're talking about. And we're saying when it's a low number, like zero, it's going to be less of um, an effort to move it. It's going to move much quicker. As you can see, I'm able to just move it around much quicker. Whereas if we add one or another number, then it's going to have much more resistance. And let's have that back to normal. Then up next, let's look at the data tab. So in the data tab, we have custom snap points. So these are helpful when these are not cutting it. So there's a situation where the bottom snap position, the middle snap position, and the top snap position, they're not really cutting it. And you need to really have more control over the snap positions. That's where you need to come to data. And then you go to custom snap points. And this takes in an array. So an array will look like this. And inside the array, we're going to have the snap points. 
and these can be points these can be percentages so for this case they're going to be percentages and the first snap point is going to be 10 percent the second one i'm going to make it 50 percent and the last one i'm going to make it 90 percent let's test them out so the first one is going to be 10 percent the second one is going to be 50 percent then the last one is going to be 90 percent and yeah that's how they work up next, we have interactions. The on set or interaction runs an action when the bottom sheet reaches a defined snap point. So whenever we reach a certain snap point, like here, we've reached a snap point, this is going to run an action. And we can click this, go to the action editor, then we can console log to the screen. So we can console log anything that we want here, but I just want to console log the index. So it provides us an index of uh, where have you snapped to. And we're able to access that. And then let's close that. Make sure you're on web preview. Open the console log, then delete everything that's in the console logs. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this by the handle. Then I'm going to go up. And you can see it tells us that we've gone to the first index. So it, goes, it tells us that we've gone to index one. Let's go up again, leave it. Then it tells us that we've gone to index zero. And yeah, this is useful for a certain amount of things, right? Instead of console logging to the screen, maybe when I reach a certain index, I want to fetch more data. So I can come in here, I can just say API request, then I can have like a conditional statement to say, if index is one, fetch data. If index is zero, then do this. Yeah, this is just, you know, hypothetical. It depends, you know, on what you want to do with your application. Then finally, uh, let's look at actions. So in order to work with actions, what I'm going to do I'm going to have two buttons. One button will be for opening, then one button is going to be for closing. And as you can see, the buttons are touching. So what I'm going to do inside the blank screen, I'm going to go on styles, and then I'm going to add a gap. So what a gap does is just adds space in between our components. And then what I want to do is go to the first button and call it open. The second button, call it close. And then on the first button, on the interactions, when you press it, what I want to do is I want to expand the bottom sheet. So this fully opens the bottom sheet, displaying all available content. So let's click this. And then what it asks us, remember when I told you about the component name and why it's important to pick a, uh, a component name that you're going to remember is, yeah, it's going to ask you which bottom sheet do you want to target? And if we have multiple bottom sheets, we might get confused here. So right now we just have one, so that's okay. And we go to that bottom sheet, we close. And then now when I click open, since we've attached that action and we've told it to expand the bottom sheet, it's going to open the bottom sheet without us having to open it ourselves. And as you can see, it opens. But then now how do we close it? So let's go to the second button on press. And then we have an action called close bottom sheet. And what I want to do, I want to pick the bottom sheet, close this, and then now when I open, I can close. But then do you notice something, right? We open, and then if we close it ourselves, it's going to still be visible. But then if we open and close it with a button, it's going to no longer be visible because it's hiding it from the view. So how do we how do we close it without hiding it from the view, right? Let's go back to our button, and instead of close bottom sheet there's another one that we can use it's called collapse the bottom sheet so instead of closing it and hiding it it closes it but then takes it to the initial snap point right so now we open and we close but it's no longer hiding it then lastly we have snap to bottom sheet index so this when it's pressed it's going to take it to a specific index point and let's use the second button for that on press, let's delete what I was doing before. And then this action is called snap to bottom sheet index. And it's going to ask you for the target component. And then we have index. So index, we can pick the index that we want. And this is going to specify where you want it to return to. So let's just have it be one, for example. And now when I open and close, it returns the to the index that I specified, right? Instead of returning to the bottom, it returns the index that I specified. 
And yeah, that's it for the bottom sheet component. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any questions in the comment. See you in the next video.